Well, I am here at City West Hotel where the Kilkenny Victory Banquet is in full flow, I can tell you. I am here at the moment with uh, Liam McCarthy, but also, more importantly, with Kilkenny's winning captain, Owen Larkin, and also, of course, their most successful manager, Brian Cody. Uh, gentlemen, you're very, very welcome indeed. Uh, Owen, I'll talk to you about the match in a moment, uh, but first of all, we have to talk to you about the song there at the end. Now, Michael Murphy, of course... Uh, Michael Murphy did Jimmy's winning matches last week out of the football final. Now, this is not sour grapes from a Galway point of view, but I thought Murphy shaded it on the singing front. <laughs> I had no doubt he would, Michael, but Tommy Welch put me under a bit of pressure and up in the hall of stand, so I, Tommy I had to puts, give in. Tommy Welch puts a lot of people under pressure. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a fantastic thing to play for Kilkenny to win all Ireland medals as you've done but of course to captain a team on a day like today was special yeah you know it was a huge honour for me when the club appointed me captain mm. and you know I was, I was honoured to take that captaincy but to captain a winning team is, is something surreal and probably won't hit me for another couple of years to come people wondered <clears throat> after the drawn match whether Kilkenny could push on and showed the enthusiasm for the, the replay and get up to that level. And you left nobody in any doubt today about it. Yeah, well, no, I think the credit has to go there to, the, to Brian and the management and, and the backroom staff, you know, they had us praying for today. And, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of work over the past three weeks. <clears throat> We've done a bit of recovery the first week and a bit of hurling the second week and then just sharpening enough to, uh, sharpen enough to third week. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of credit has to go to them for, for that. Well, we give every credit to Brian Cody. Congratulations, Brian. Nine All-Ireland titles under your tenure. That's a fantastic achievement. <laughs> this year, of course, looking back at the championship in general, you, as in Kilkenny, had to do this slightly differently than some other years. That's right, Michael, yeah. Um, you know, we won the league final, you know, back in whenever it was, and then we came into the championship and... You know, we had to prepare very, very well for the first Leinster semi-final against Dublin because Dublin were a team that could seriously trouble us, we, we felt, and we prepared well for that, and then we got over that well. But Leinster final then against Galway, you know, Galway completely out hurled us and we, we lost that. So, you know, certainly that was the All-Ireland semi-final straight entry into that was gone, so we had to play Limerick then in the quarter-final. Yeah. And a team that was going well, a lot of, you know, good, very good young players, and we stumbled along for a while in that, but we picked it up in the second half, and good semi-final against Tipperary and you know then the last day when you know we were we could have been beaten we could have won sure. um, as they end up Galway scored equalised from the last pocket again if you like but in the first half they had seriously seriously troubled us as well so today was a huge challenge for us you know it was it's the last Sunday in September it's been a long year but I think I suppose to win it was absolutely terrific altogether but to win it playing so very very well too was, was really something special you, you, um, you obviously looked at things from the last day. You made some big calls for today's replay in terms of changes of the team. Yeah, well, I suppose to be perceived as being big calls. I mean, I don't make Martin and myself pick the team, and we don't. We just pick as we see we yeah. should pick it. And didn't see them as being particularly big, to be honest about it. Um, very, very difficult. I, the players who didn't start, very, very difficult not to start those players. But the players who we did start, who hadn't started the last day, were, they were just standing out in training, I suppose, really, you know, and putting their hands up and you go with what you think is the right thing to do. And, you know, but it was essentially a team effort, a panel effort, really, you know. And I think that's been our, our strength, really, over the years. It's not just the team, but it's the whole panel working together and the, the way the players were pushed in training by mm. the other players who were not getting the opportunity to start. Yeah. So when you do get a chance to start, you have to respect the fact that there's fellas there who are perfectly entitled to start as well. One last question, Owen, to yourself. Now, I suppose I should ask this of Brian Cody. I know he'll sidestep the answer. Nine All-Ireland titles. Is he going to go for the ten? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't, Michael, but 
you know, Brian will make up his own mind over the next couple of months and, and I'm sure we'll see him again. All right. Lads, uh, as one of our panellists said to me during the second half when you were stretching out the lead, he says, you know what, he says, they're some team. You certainly are. Old Larkin, Brian Cody. Many, many thanks indeed. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks, lads. All right, Des, uh, that's it for the moment from here, but we're back with more people to talk to from City West Hotel in a little while. OK, we look forward to that, Michael. Well, let's get some reaction here. I'm just looking at Twitter reaction, for instance, Eddie, now about Brian Cody. Between his All-Irelands as a player and a manager, 13 All-Irelands, the same number of All-Irelands that Offaly, Galway, Waterford and Clare have between them. Some stat, isn't it? Unbelievable stat. Um, you know, I suppose what hasn't been said about the man... Um, for me, I suppose, look, I was lucky to work under him, but, uh, you know, we've seen this year, I suppose, it was a little bit more difficult for Kilkenny, but I think Brian Cody, the biggest thing that he's brought to Kilkenny, I suppose, is, uh, is just his own, he's, he's so hungry for it, and he has kept the team motivated for so long. And I think his enthusiasm, you know, we fed off that as players. Uh, I know I, you know, I did when I was there, but this year, I suppose, they've had to do it the hard way, and they look to be under pressure. And I think, once again, um, you know, his, his passion for Kilkenny, for his pride in Kilkenny, ultimately, is what, you know, he, he takes huge pride in that. And uh, ultimately, I suppose, that, that filtered mm. through to the players. But what an achievement as a manager. Unbelievable. It is indeed. But when, I mean, if that follows through to the players, Donald, I mean, they're ruthless. Like, they had Galway beaten, but they were still driving on, driving on. The lads coming in, all obviously, naturally trying to score goals. Well, I suppose, Des, you get one chance in an order in a final and every fellow, you know, particularly people up front, they'd like to go home with feeling like that, you know, you've had a point or two there. But, you know, I think the, the great challenge for, for Brian and for, uh, you know, Mick Dempsey and Martin Fogley were to get the team right over the three weeks. And I think they did that. They, first of all, stabilised the defence. They went away from the man-marking, chasing players all around the place. They played in their positions. And then he had to make big calls up, uh, up front. He said they weren't big calls, but I think they were big enough. He knew he had to change the forwards. And, you know, Walter Walsh, uh, inspirational uh, um, you know, selection. I think that he 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 completely unhinged the Galway defence, and Killian Buckley played a very good holding role in 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 the middle of the field. So you know, they deserve the kudos. And as Eddie said, right, right huge um, yeah. you know uh, feat again, and uh, what a manager to have. And he has kept Kilkenny, we'll say, you know, hungry all through this, and that that's a very very difficult thing to do. Okay, we'll look at the game in more detail and where you think it was won and lost presently. But Cyril, for Galway, I mean, Kilkenny did up their game. Were Galway? Inferior yeah, to the last. Des, you look at the build up going into the game. Galway Friday night, James Cahill under huge pressure, dislocated his shoulder. Injury doubts about Joe Cannon, a bit of pressure during the week. You compare that to Kilkenny. Brian Cody, the mind what he says there, he made a great call. He re energised the team by bringing on Walter Welch and Young Buckley. Now, they had played under 21 Hurling Championship Hurling this year, played OK, but didn't set the world alight. Mm -hmm. But by bringing them on, he was, he, was setting, he was putting pressure on the team, on the panel, and on himself. And like he freshened up that team, and especially like the way he placed him. Richie Hogan went in full forward, very, very tricky, very, very skillful, good in the air. But Walter Welch, six foot four, and Johnny Cohen about five eleven, good in the air. And early on, especially Tommy Welch and JJ, uh, Brian Hogan, they lorried the high ball in the top, and he used his strength out there. And like all over the place, Killing Buckley Avenue was going to go in midfield, but all over the park there was just more energy in, in Kilkenny. They were completely on top, and we're lucky not to be more than four up at half time. Like they're the best team by far that I've ever seen. Like and they've proven it again. I think. Yeah. <laughs> You know, unless something can come up, they're going to be there for another while. All right, then. Uh, thanks for now, lads. Well, coming up, man of the match, our team of the year. But next is our panel's big match analysis. Now, more GA coverage coming up on RTE this week. On Thursday, believe it or not, the championship draw for 2013 takes place. It's on RTE 2 live at half past seven. And on Sunday at eight o'clock, highlights from the ladies' football finals at Croke Park. There should be great action there. That's on RTE 2. Now, we'll be going back to the victorious Kilkenny Hotel shortly for the man of the match. And we'll be naming our team of the year and reflecting on the minor final. But first... Let's analyse how the Cats won the All-Ireland with Cyril, Donal and Eddie. And Eddie, getting back to this point about how Kilkenny set it up in the full forward line and the dramatic changes there. Well, you know, I suppose when we looked at the previous two clashes with Galway, um, the Kilkenny forwards, you know, had been contained. So I suppose it was going to be vitally important how they set up today. And, you know, I suppose Walter Welch was the big call. Um, I think a lot of people in Kilkenny probably held their breaths when they seen the change, but... 
For a young fella today making his debut in All-Ireland final, he, he, sh he certainly showed no nerves. Um, he got a couple of great scores in the first half to really set himself down. I mean, Johnny Cohn, as we mentioned earlier, was influential for Galway all year. But um, this fella, he, I'd seen him play in the Leinster final and he'd done well. You know, he was able to see a pass and pick a score. Mm. But Richie Hogan's placing at full forward was probably a hugely significant thing. Something that Galway may not have planned for today. Very tricky fella. Close to the goal, I suppose, for me, is, is, is a good place for Richie. I mean, the 2000 League final, he probably helped us get us over the line against Tipperary. But yeah. he's very strong in the air and very and deceptively strong. You know, he, he's, he's not the tallest, but he caught a couple of great balls. These, you know, and he's able to see a pass as well. He's very good head on his shoulders. He's able to pick out, he, as a forward, I suppose, he knows what the other forwards want. And this ultimately set up the goal for, uh, for Walter Welsh. And, you know, I suppose, down in... Southall Kenny and Tullahar Ross Birkin, it's going yeah. to be a huge night for him. Um, you know, there's been a very famous number 14 for Kilkenny in the neighbouring club in Glenmore in big the form Chris of big Christy Heffernan. Yeah. And I suppose Walter uh, looks to be cut out of the same cloth, big fella. And you know, I suppose what a way to start your, your, your inter county career. Would there be quiet lads down in that neck of the woods? There'll be, be tough yokes now, they're, they're, they're wild boys, but no doubt there'll be, there'll be big bonfires. Um, I think we passed through it a few years ago on a homecoming, and uh, no doubt they'll be hugely proud of Walter tonight. Yeah, well, isn't that great? That's fantastic. What an occasion for him. All right. Now, you felt, Cyril, that there were serious lessons learned, and you said to me that the teams who win replays are the ones who learn the most. Yeah, well, like, Kilkenny would feel that, like, that Gaw would need a good start, and they took the game to Gaw from the very start, and even when Gaw were getting scores, Des, the big thing was that Kilkenny were always going to hit back. Now, here's, here's a flick on. Now, Johnny Cohn tries to get a flick, actually hits his hand, but before Gaw had time to regroup or kind of reset again, the puck out comes very fast. The next thing you'll see it here, it's gone back over the bar, TJ breaks onto the ball. So instead of being able to build on the score, in 30 seconds afterwards, it's flashed over the bar. Now, again, we're going to show again that Gaw would get another, probably a very, very good goal, a great move on this. This glow defence, Tanning gets out here, Cannon is way back to it's long ball in. Now it's a great ball, Cyril Donnan caught some great balls there, catches a good one, flicks a lovely hand pass to Damien Hayes, there's a look, another hand pass across here, David Buckley in back of the net. Now that's two goals with inside three minutes, but again there's, like Kilkenny didn't let Gaw settle. This is a ball that should definitely have been turned back, it hits the ground, it bounces through, and who gets onto it? Owen Larkin, goes down the middle, cuts inside on it, keeps going. Now he keeps going on and on, good save here by Scale, breaks out, but here's, uh, here's Richie Power flicking yeah. the wrist back of the net. So Galway never got a five or ten minute spell after getting the scores, like to build on it and to get the momentum towards rock back again. It's Kilkenny were still the driving force to hold him. Even Galway getting two goals inside three minutes. Just a quick point on that. Cyril made the point that Joe Canning setting up that second goal with that long diagonal ball. Donald, but he played very deep today, didn't he? Yeah, he, well, he has been doing this. Um, he did it in the Leinster final, he did it in the uh, semi final against Cork. He seems to stay inside full far for four or five minutes and then wanders around. And I, I think he may have been involved in the play in the freeze, and that's why he, he was that far back. But I mean, you know, if Galway had to have any chance today, I think they, had, they needed him up around the, the 20 metre line so he could feed off passes or, or make scores because he's their top scorer. And if he gets a chance, you know, we saw he had a fantastic shot in the second half that just came off the butt of the upright. If that had ended up in the net, it would nearly been, I think there'd have been only a point behind or two points behind and it might have given him the impetus but you know I yeah. think that's something that they'll have to look at in the, in the years to come. Take us through that key couple of minutes in the second half. Yeah, there was, a, the yeah there was about five minutes there, Des, I think about the 43rd, 44th minute when, when you know, Galway had been under the cash for a while and then the defence started to get the grips with, with, um, with Kilkenny and you know, Damien Hayes pushed the ball back there to Cyril Don and we just heard the whistle as he was hitting the ball there, right, okay, a fantastic goal and I think there'd have been only you know, two points in it then. Now Damien Hayes was, was fouled here, I think maybe the ref has given advantage but you know, it gets a little clip there, but you'd expect the play to be allowed to go on mm -hmm. and then him finish the 